Library District. My name is Isabel, I'm the teen librarian, and this video is how to make sourdough bread, taught by someone who doesn't really know how to make sourdough bread. I started baking bread three and a half months ago, so yeah, 100% I was on the bandwagon of people who started buying up all the flour and yeast at all the grocery stores because I needed something to do during quarantine. It definitely is a lot of chemistry and a lot of detail work, but it's also really easy and it's super satisfying to whip up a pretty quick loaf of sourdough bread or white bread or English muffins. And so I thought that I would try to share some of my uh, newfound enthusiasm with the rest of my Altadena community. So let's get into it. Okay, the first part of sourdough bread is the starter. Basically what sourdough starter is, is it's a pre-fermented mixture of flour and water. And usually when you start a starter, you add a little bit of yeast or a little bit of sugar in there to give the live active cultures something to eat, essentially. It's super easy to do by scratch from what I've heard, uh, but we're not gonna cover starting a new starter in this video. So if you haven't, go check online. I'll add some links maybe, um, and come back to this video when you have your starter ready. Great, so now that you're back, this is a pre-fermenting mixture. Um, what you have to do with sourdough starters is to feed it, which basically means you are adding more flour and water to the existing mixture in order to keep the uh, cultures and the yeast active and fermenting. You need to give it something to ferment. Sourdough starters are like pretty adorable in that you have to like feed it and take care of it. So, you know, I could stick a pair of googly eyes on here and give it a name and it would be a lot better. I should do that actually. <laughs> Sourdough starter needs to be fed daily if it is sitting out on your counter in room temp. A really great hack though is to stick your sourdough starter in your fridge. When a sourdough starter is cold, it slows down the fermentation process. So this is my fridge starter. I fed it like four days ago or something like that because it still does need to be fed. I usually go between one and two weeks in between feeding my fridge starter. This is my active starter. So four or five days ago, I took my fridge starter out and I made a new one and I fed a new one and I've been leaving this one out on the counter, feeding it daily to get it nice and like woken up, get it nice and active and funky and get lots of good fermentation. And as you can see, so both of these containers contains approximately the same amount of ingredients, two thirds cup flour and half a cup of water and a couple tablespoons of an old starter. But look at the difference. This one is almost doubled in size because it's really funky and it's really active and it's ready to be baked with. And it's gonna have a really like funky sort of beer smell almost. It's gonna smell really yeasty. Some recipes might call for something a little bit weaker. Some might call for something a little bit stronger. Again, I'm kind of new to this. I've had multiple iterations of the same starter uh, for three and a half months now, and it's working for me. The recipe that I'm using today is from a blog or website called The Kitchen. I really liked it. I've made this bread a couple times before. And one of the things I love about breaking, baking bread, bleh, <laughs> is that every loaf is different. Every time you think that you're doing it exactly the same way, you're not. Every single loaf of bread is different. And I really think that's kind of fun because um, you never know what's gonna happen. Every time you bake a new loaf of bread, the air is different, the humidity is different, your starter is not as ripe as it was a little bit ago or whatever. So the ingredients that you need, your very ripe, funky starter, flour. Honestly, I would prefer to be using bread flour. I think it's probably gonna make better bread. Um, I have not been able to find bread flour and I just have all purpose flour and you know what? It works. It's not about being perfect, it's about doing the best that you can. Yeast, uh, for this recipe you do need an extra bit of yeast. I got a yeast hookup, it's pretty cool. And then just some kosher salt or table salt. The first step in this recipe is to combine your yeast and a little bit of water. Yeah, you need water to make bread, I should have added that. I'm gonna do that right now. I forgot to mention something super important. 
The recipe as it's listed on the website is for two loaves of bread. I am only gonna make one, so I'm gonna be having this recipe, just so we're all on the same page. So we have five ounces of water in here, and now we are going to do, because this is annoying, I had to have this recipe, so I had to make weird measurements. Uh, now we're gonna add three quarters of a teaspoon of yeast. Yeah, okay, I think I did that right. And then we're gonna mix it up. Now we're gonna stir in our beautiful sourdough starter. Oh, look at it, I love it. Um, ooh, look at it, oh. All right, now we're gonna mix that together. All right, so this is our sourdough starter, our water and our yeast. Now what we're gonna add is the all-purpose flour and a little bit of salt here. And we're gonna knead it into, as the recipe says, a shaggy dough. Um, this is part is a little bit messy, so I might have to, you might have to bear with me. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. I had to move countertops because uh, I have a small kitchen. So here's the dough as I'm beginning to mix it. Um, I do not have a stand mixer. I have to mix this all with my little paddle. Make sure to wash your hands in the time of a global pandemic. I wash my hands. Um, so you need to incorporate this dough and then eventually I'm gonna turn it out onto this cutting board to knead it for a little bit longer. All right, so here's my dough. It's starting to look a little bit better. I put it out on this uh, cutting board. So I'm gonna knead this a little bit more until the flour gets a little bit more incorporated. Um, I will say, I've made this bread before in the past, and I think what I need to be careful to not do this time is to over knead this dough. All right, here is my finished product. So what you want is it holds its shape, but it's still a little sticky. Honestly, I didn't add any extra flour this time, um, and it's... It's actually pretty dry. So I, I don't know, this is the thing. Bread making, it's an adventure. I never know what's gonna happen. You have to be open to an outcome being not what you expected. Yeah, so that's sort of the texture of it when I pull it apart. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do the first proof. Something I like about this recipe is that it does not require an extended rise time for the bread. So some sourdough loaves or even white bread loaves, you have to let them rise over, they recommend letting them rise overnight. This one has a pretty short, like this is doable in one day. So I added a little bit of olive oil to that bowl, frankly, maybe a little bit more than I should have. Um, and I'm gonna sort of coat it in olive oil. I'm gonna smooth it out. I'm gonna throw a dish towel on top of this and I'm gonna check back on it in one and a half to two hours. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half that this has been rising. It looks, to me at least, uh, <laughs> like it's doubled in size. So it's gotten nice and it's starting to puff up. The, the yeast is, is helping it to rise and the, the sourdough is, is in there nice and fermenting. Um, I brushed it in olive oil, so it has a really nice soft texture. It has like a little bit of give there, you see. So in the original recipe, you're making enough dough for two loaf pans, and she recommends that you do one proof. Proof means you let it rise. So you do one proof in the bowl, and then split the dough, put it in the pan, and let it proof again. Even though I'm not splitting up my dough, I've still used that method of sort of letting it rise in the bowl first and then moving it to the pan. I don't really know why, I just have not So I'm gonna move it into the pan and we'll see how it looks. Ta-da! So there it is. It's gonna puff again, or rise proof again for another hour and a half or so. And I'm going to do something today that I've never done before. A Altadena Library exclusive. Um, I'm going to add some sesame seeds because I would like to see how a sesame loaf turns out. You know what? I did it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna cover this with a dish towel 
um, and let it rise for, yeah, about another hour and a half. All right, so it hasn't been exactly an hour and a half yet, but, ooh, look at that. Because the, the rise has gotten to the top of the pan, I went ahead and preheated the oven. Now, in the recipe online, it says to preheat to 450 and then bake for 10 minutes, turn it down to 400 for another 25. When I've made this bread in the past, it's come out a little overdone, I felt like, or as I mentioned earlier, just really dense and like thick bake or like a thick crust. So I'm instead preheating the oven to 420 today and then I'll maybe kick it down to 400. Just keeping you guys tuned in to all of my adjustments because uh, it's fun to, to try different things. But this looks nice. Look at this little seam that's opened up here. I'm also going uh, to score it uh, with a serrated knife, just like just along the side. Um, when the oven is preheated, I'll slide it in. All right. So I just scored my bread. That's just taking a serrated knife and just making a, a few little lines here and it is ready to go in the oven. Hey, so while my dinner is in the oven, I thought uh, my dinner is in the oven. Blah. So while my bread is in the oven, I thought I'd take this opportunity to share a cookbook that I have absolutely fallen in love with from the Altadena Library collection. This book is called Zaytoun, Recipes from the Palestinian Kitchen. It's by Yasmin Khan. It is such a fun book. I have loved all the recipes in it. They're pretty easy, honestly. Not I've found everything to be delicious in it too so far. In fact, I just ordered myself a copy for my own kitchen because I have to send this back to the library so that everybody else can check it out. Um, but tonight I'm going to make shrimp stew, spicy shrimp and tomato stew. Um, traditionally, I guess this would be served with flatbread, uh, but I thought a sesame sourdough might actually hit the spot in terms of like mopping up all this delicious tomato up here. So when my bread is done baking and my stew is done cooking, I'll show you the finished dish. Ta-da! I've now gotten sesame seeds everywhere, but here's the finished product. Honestly, I could have cooked it a little bit longer. It's still a little doughy on the inside, but it doesn't have that super, super thick, tough crust that I was getting before. It's a little bit softer, so honestly, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's also probably not done cooling. I probably opened it too soon. Most people recommend that you let the bread sit for like 40 minutes or something to cool before you cut into it, but I am bad at delayed gratification. And ta-da! Uh, that is my dinner tonight. Homemade bread, homemade uh, Palestinian shrimp and tomato stew. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Look, this bread has already been half eaten. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. My parting message is just that you do not have to know how to make bread to make bread. It is not that hard to mess up and there are so many opportunities to try and try and try again and see how it comes out the next time. And it is truly so satisfying to do it yourself and to eat uh, your own food. It's really exciting. I enjoyed a lot. I have enjoyed attempting to share it with everyone. So thank you so much for watching. Peace out.